This is actually an important point, which will segue to my last question. I know you've got to run, but you know, I was looking at my Parmigiano Reggiano cheese today and the only ingredients are like milk, salt, and rennet. And I think that if you're eating cheese, my perspective would be, you want to make sure that that's animal rennet and not vegetable rennet. Um, especially if you have autoimmune conditions or you're quite sensitive. I, and would you agree with that? I think that like, you want to just be careful because some cheeses are going to have vegetable rennets in them. And I think that could cause autoimmune issues for people. It also has some soy residue. So if you're very allergic to oh, soy, shit. some yeah. of the soy protein that's there, it's going to cause allergic reactions. And if you're buying grated cheese, which I advise not to do, make sure that the label doesn't say, and unfortunately, sometimes now they're allowed to not say it, uh, it, it, it can have silicon dioxide powder in it as an anti-caking agent. And that's terrible. It's like powder glass into your intestines. It causes the exact same micro colitis that you mentioned initially. Uh, and over time, Chances are, if, if you're consuming these foods regularly, you will get, maybe, you may get this inflammatory bowel disease down the road. So so as little process as possible, and that includes, you know, if you can get like the actual cheese block versus the grated one, go for the block, right? And, and you know, if you can check the rennet, again, I agree with you, uh, the animal rennet is much safer. And if it's a, if it's a, um, uh, the vegetable rennet, then watch for symptoms of gastrointestinal disturbance, any kind of a bloating, uh, the noises that the stomach makes. This is usually an indication that uh, it's not sitting well with your with your GA tract and probably is causing some kind of a serotonin release. Flushing is also a very good sign. Eating anything that causes flushing, probably shouldn't be eating it, or at least not on a regular basis. Yeah, we talked about all that earlier. Anything that irritates the intestine, you don't want that. So we talked about pectin, carrageenan, starches, and, and these excipients in medication. So this is what I wanted to end on because um, I... In the past, when I was seeing patients or clients virtually, I don't do this anymore. Um, I, one of the things that I found most impactful was having them stop all of their supplements that had anything in, you know, uh, that except like a pure desiccated organ supplement, which obviously I'm biased, but there's none of these excipients in what we make at Hardened Soil. But I've heard you talk about silicon dioxide, titanium dioxide, talc, talc. Um, you know, citric acid additives to these, um, to these supplements, I vitamin, mean, C. Least, vit vitamin C exactly, which can be from corn or other problematic things. So I just want people to understand that, uh, supplements are not benign and, and the excipients in here are, are, are pretty significant. You want to, you want to run with that for a little bit. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, because I just think for many people, they don't need these supplements. Uh, there, if you just eat meat and organs and fruit, you're going to be fine. You're going to get all the vitamins you need. And what you're, you're yeah. getting all this stuff that you're not even aware of, which is why I'm not a fan of this stuff. I mean, obviously the number one factor for any company that's selling a product on their shelf life, right? You, you want to produce something that can last indefinitely and be bought whenever that client wants to buy it. So they will do anything possible to do that. So for the supplements, especially the ones in dry form, it's kind of easier because you don't have to add that many preservatives, but you know, uh, anti-caking agents like silicon dioxide, the uh, titanium dioxide, talc. By the way, all these three, the, the, this trifecta they call, is present in virtually all pharmaceutical drugs. You're taking any pharmaceutical drug in a tablet form or even a capsule form, chances are it has one or more of these. Um, and I've looked at many of these pharma drugs that, on the label. They list many of the artificial colorings that I mentioned. The Allura Red now is known to cause the, uh, this, this uh, inflammatory bowel disease condition. Um, also, several studies noticed that artificial colors are associated with hyperactivity disorder in children, ADHD. There's even a doctor out there, this, his entire theory is that this entire epidemic of ADHD we're seeing is just these children ingesting this candy and all these artificial things that are basically pumped full of, of, of chemicals that are psychoactive. Uh, he's saying, like, I'm not claiming they work well on the other, but I know children that don't eat these candies and they're basically related genetically to the children that they are. And the two groups are drastically different. Nothing can explain it except something in like in the environment, right? So, so yeah, when you're getting these supplements, some of the supplements themselves are byproducts of a, some kind of an industrial waste and are really contaminated with heavy metals. Vitamin C is a very big uh, uh, offender in this, in this category, um, as, as is citric acid. Both of these are added as antioxidants and preservatives, especially in juices. Now, of course, a lot of people say, well, I'm drinking the, you know, the juice for the vitamin C. Well, if it's present naturally, like in citrus fruit, right, then you don't need to add more. I mean, it's already got its own kind of like preservative there. But if you're drinking anything like apple juice, like grape juice or pear juice, you look on the on the back of the label, chances are it contains either citric acid or vitamin C or both. And all both of these are, are known to be contaminated because they're industrially produced. Many of them are coming imported from countries with like less than stellar safety regulation um, in this regard. I don't want to mention names because some people may get offended. But um, 
but also malic uh, i'm sorry citric acid itself is now known to be implicated in the cancer process um, um it's known that cancer cells overproduce the enzyme fat acid synthase and citrate synthase because they apparently depend on fatty acids for survival and they use citric acid a metabolite of the krebs cycle to actually synthesize fats and promote their own growth and conversely they noticed uh, doctors noticed that um, not doctors but researchers when they injected animals with small tumors with citric acid it drastically increased the speed at which the tumors grow and metastasize. So citric acid by itself is probably not something you want to consume in large amounts. Even if it's pure, it's dangerous, but most of the case, it's not even pure. Uh, so look at the label, right? Um, and then for the, when it comes to the vitamins, um, very often they're contaminated, again, with heavy metals. But, but even without that, if you look at the excipients, you often have microcrystalline cellulose. Now, microcrystalline, it implies that the particles from which this is, uh, this capsule has been generated are so tiny, they can actually get through the intestinal lining and to your bloodstream. Anything foreign that gets into the bloodstream, and correct me if I'm wrong, will likely trigger an allergic and or inflammatory reaction, right? Even if it's something tiny, it's like a yeah. vegetable capsule. Magnesium yeah. stearate, um, by itself benign, like as a formula, however, uh, uh, also known to, to ad- absorb into the bloodstream sometimes, especially in people with compromised b- uh, gut barrier function. Uh, what else? Um, so uh, the crystalline, the cellulose, anything else? Those are the main ones. There's probably others. Uh, oh, the the modified cornstarch. Yeah, it's, it's usually done in such small particles that also reliably absorbs sufficiently to the bloodstream to cause a problem. So ideally, you want a product that, if you look at the label, it says active ingredient in dosage, right? And then the uh, usually it says amount per serving, right, as a total amount. And then basically it says basically the individual the individual amounts if it's more than one. You want the total amount. Uh, you want when you add up the individual amounts, you want them to equal the total amount. If they're not, means there's something in there. There's a filler, right? And more often than not, it's not a good thing, right? Uh, sometimes, uh, in, depending on the amount of the filler, they're required to list it, but not always. And since the pandemic started, FDA and USDA instituted the so-called um, emergency restriction amelioration on the producers. And now for many of the products, even foods in the market, uh, the, the vendor is not required to actually have the ingredients that are listed on the label. To me, that's, that's, that's catastrophic, but it's still in place. The emergency order has not been removed. And now you can have something that says coconut oil, uh, I don't know, beef tallow, blah, blah, blah. It's, in fact, it's peanut oil. So be very careful, right? And I guarantee you, it's, if it's happening for food, it's happening even more so for the supplements. So supplements should be just list the ingredients. And then underneath, it, it should just say vegetable capsule or gelatin capsule. And that's about it. That's about it as far as I would go to ingesting a you know uh, synthetic supplement. Yeah, microcrystalline cellulose. Like, just read your supplements, guys. You will be astounded at what's in there. And then... Like I said, I think most of the supplements people are taking, they have no need for if they're eating a, a nutrient-rich diet. And and a lot of the supplements I think people are take are harmful. So 